I feel like I should actually mute my phone rather than putting it on Do Not Disturb because knowing my phone, I'm going to get like a a, a uh, notification from like my Food Network app or something, like teaching me how to make fat-free meatloaf <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> fat-free meatloaf. That's gross. <laughs> All right, get you it started. Want, do you want the intro or do you want me to? You can do it. I've done it for a while. All right. Are you recording both? Yes. <laughs> All right, Pog. Kind of glad you do ask now, though. I'm worried. Oh, something's freaking hitting my foot. All right. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that's the intro. I'm doing, hey, no, everybody. I'm doing that again. Dude. <laughs> what just happened? I don't know. You should have left that in. That was good. I might, anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode... 30! Th- 30, okay. I actually remembered the, the, uh, the number this time. Whoa. This is a monumental episode. We don't have a guest. Of, uh, Descant. That's what we're called around yeah, here. Yeah, Descant. I'm, I'm Noah, this is Eli. And I'm Eli. Let me, dude, I can introduce myself. Well, I'm introducing you for you. Ha ha, gotcha. Ah uh, ha ha. Uh, ha ha. Bro, I almost said, I love you, and then B word. Ain't ever gonna <laughs> stop loving you, B word. I Which love you. Random. I love you. Wait, hold on. I can actually reenact it. <laughs> I love you. Eh. I ain't never gonna stop loving you. Eh. That's so out of tune. It is. I I didn't even strum like a chord. I just strummed the guitar. You can Put still it. tell though, <laughs> or I can Put at it least. Back. Yeah, Put it's it not back. Half of the strings are metal and half of them are nylon, and I'm pretty sure the metal strings are the exact same strings as the nylon ones, so they're not supposed to be where they are. It's I need to get just a full set of strings for it. All right, it's not great. Um, so Noah says Noah told me before we started recording that he has something to talk about, but it's it's not it's not like a whole episode topic. It's just something he wants to say. So uh, let me hear it, Noah. Um. This, okay, I just remembered something that was really bothering me all day. Both of the things I have to talk about are about video games, but to be honest, Good it Lord, doesn't matter. Dude, <laughs> dude wha- listen, people who are listening know who we are. We're allowed to talk about whatever we want. We don't have a theme. Shut up. I mean, yeah, that's true. Um, the f- Okay, I don't know if I've ever said this on podcast, but I have to say this now that it's it's been brought up. Every single person that I have told that, why did you mute? I, di- I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> um, every single person that I've told about our podcast, the first thing they ask me is, what's it about? Dude, your guess is as good as mine. It's day by day. Day by day, yes, sir. Like we, uh, Tiger King, Minecraft, mainly Minecraft. <laughs> I feel like there's more podcasts than people realize that aren't really about anything. Yeah, I would say most podcasts That's, are about. I, I nothing. thought that was like what it was supposed to be, but no, everybody's like, "What's in a pound?" I'm sorry, I I shouldn't make fun of those people because uh, yeah. our fans, <laughs> the two that we have. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Bleep your name out. <laughs> but um, like, I don't, I don't know. Like, how many podcasts are there that you know of that actually have a theme? I can't I really mean, think of any. I guess. If you're talking, if you consider, like, interviewing people a theme, then, like, H3's podcast, um, Joe Rogan. That'd be Joe Rogan, yeah. Um, But but if you, I mean, people like the official podcast, they don't have a theme at all. No. And as far (laughs) as I know, they just wing it and sometimes have things to talk about. Definitely. Uh, they're, one of their members, Jackson, he, uh, he's known for being the topic man and they make fun of him for it all the time. (laughs) <laughs> that's funny so like, i think it's so funny that uh charlie he's like i mean he makes tons of money off youtube uh, if not you probably all do just other things but like i'm pretty sure charlie still lives with his parents that's it, great it's, we love it's that. so funny and like if you look at his like he doesn't flex or anything like that he wears a white t-shirt in every <laughs> video like it, it's it's just so funny to me that his whole thing he makes money off of Twitch and stuff like that, and it, it's just funny. Hey, live below your means. I know he he's genuinely critical. If you if you guys don't know, it's critical or Penguin Z 
zero zero something. Penguin Z zero one. I'm pretty sure. I thought it was. Z- um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's a uh, critical or moist critical. Um, <laughs> he's he's really funny, and he has one of the strangest senses of humor I've they ever seen do. in my life. But he's he's I, really funny. I haven't listened to them in a long time. I I love the official podcast. They're so funny. They are funny. All right, to my topic. This is yeah. very random and strange, but I I'm genuinely intrigued. Okay. What was your first experience with speed running? With speed running? Yeah, like speed running a game. That's For those of you who don't know, speed running a game, like a video game. Um, let's say the original Super Mario Brothers, for example. Um, the whole goal is to just beat the game as quickly as possible. Um, so, and there's different categories. So, any percent is the like number one category that any game re- generally has, and any percent is basically just get to the end. Like, any means necessary. Glitches, like. You know, all this stuff. Uh, hacks aren't allowed. That's a separate category. I think that's called a tool-assisted <laughs> speed run. Um, but basically anything, as long as you just boot up the game and play it and beat it quickly, that's any percent. Um, there's also 100%, which is much less common, where you literally beat a game to its capacity in the shortest amount of time possible. Those are much longer. Um, but wh- I'm interested. What is your first experience with speedrunning that you can remember you know interestingly enough and uh this is gonna bring up a little side story just because i think it's funny but Mm -hmm. so i i went to a bonfire recently i promise Mm -hmm. this is on topic okay (laughs) and it it was at someone's house um and this one dude just freaking ganked their xbox and started playing minecraft like while everyone was socializing, this dude was just playing Xbox Minecraft, and I was I mean, like, how, "Can you blame him?" I was like, first of all, <laughs> freaking legendary." <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> but um, he asked me about speedrunning. I think I, I I couldn't I can't remember if he was speedrunning or whatever, but he he mentioned speedrunning, and I was like, you know, now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever speedrun Minecraft. It's it's a very strange game to speedrun. I don't think I ever have. I've watched speedrunning videos, like um, there, there's to- different there's specific category. There's spe- oh yeah, he's Toy Cat's IDX dumb. Toy Cat. His voice is so annoying sometimes, but he he makes very quality videos, and I'm I'm very torn on watching his content. Yeah, I I kind of I really liked him for a while, but I kind of have mixed feelings on him now. Um, you remember Stampy? Oh God. Um, I like I like lest his we not series. speak his name. <laughs> Terraria or uh, Stampy's Terraria series was pretty fun. I watched a little bit of that. But um, uh, anyway, I I don't think I've actually ever speed ran anything, which is really actually, weird. But I, I was thinking about it the other day, and the first experience I, I remember this specifically, and I I remembered it today, <laughs> which is why I, uh, why I thought about this topic. Um, the first, it, I guess, encounter I wasn't speed running, but the first encounter I had with you know, the art of speed running was my older cousin, um, years ago playing his original Xbox. He was playing the original halo. Um, halo. and I, halo. you know, I was like, I, I, don't even, I don't even know how old I was. Um, the X, it was, I think halo like two had already been out. So he was, you know, he's playing the older game. Um, but I think I was like six or something like that. Dang, that's uh, pretty old. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And he he was speedrunning, and I was like, why are you moving so quick? There's stuff over there. And he's like, well, I'm trying to go fast. And I was like, Gotta run fast and stay fast. That's Uh, a reference nobody's going to get. So he explained how speedrunning speedrunning, speedrunning works. Um, I don't exactly know how speedrunning the original Halo works, because I've never played the original Halo. I don't know if there's weird categories or anything for it. Um... To be honest, it could have been Halo 2. I have, I have no idea. All I know is it was Halo. I recognized Halo, and I knew it was the original Xbox because I vividly remember it sitting on the ground. That thing is massive. <laughs> um, but that was my first encounter, and I was trying to think of the first game that I attempted a speedrun of, and I remember 
vaguely that it was New Super Mario Bros. The like the original new one for the DS. Hmm. Um, you you played that game? I remember you said. Excuse me. Everyone played that game. Wait. Everyone played New Super Mario Bros. You said for the for the original DS. Yeah. 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 Um, I remember speed running that, or at least attempting to. And I remember I would get so mad and just turn my DS off and then turn it back on. <laughs> That's um, how it goes. I didn't have a timer set up or anything. I was just going fast. And any time I messed up, I'd get really mad. Um, <laughs> I don't think I made it past the second level, to be Bro, honest. Y'all ever speed run life? <laughs> Bro, just, oh, never mind. I'm not, nope. Okay. Freaking have, have kids by five, graduate college <laughs> by four. <laughs> Get your doctorate degree by four. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, anyway, but I was just thinking about speedrunning, and I was thinking about games that are so interesting to speedrun. Because if you watch somebody do a speedrun of Super Mario Odyssey, I, anyone watching, and this goes to you as well, Eli, please look up Small Ant <laughs> on YouTube. And watch his, uh, what is it? All right, I'll do it right now. No. Minimum (laughs) captures speed run small on small ant. Um, that guy is crazy and he's not even one of the best players. And it's like, how do you do anything? Like anytime I play Odyssey, how do you do anything? Anytime I play Odyssey after I found small ant, I, I just feel incapable. <laughs> and I'm like, how do you even do this? The yeah. entire game, if you guys don't know, Super Mario Odyssey is a really big game. Like, There's so many worlds to explore and so much to do in each world. Um, the entire game can be e- beaten in under an hour now. Dang. Um, it was this whole thing, sub-hour. Was, it was like a huge thing when the game came out because the first speedrun of the game ever was done in like three hours, which is still... For a game like that, really fast. And it was on day one. Somebody played through the game normally, spent like an entire day playing through it normally, and then said, all right, I'm doing a speed run, and just did a really rough speed run, and it was like three and a half hours long. Um, and now I think the record is somewhere around 55 minutes. What's the record for Minecraft? It's like um, it's like well, 15 I, minutes I, or something, isn't it? I think seedless it's like 15 or 20 minutes but with a seed it's like 45 seconds or something stupid like that oh yeah because they uh also I, I, one i watched was a tool assisted seeded speed run yeah so they had they had basically hacks um Did- but it's it's not hacks it's tool okay what tool assisted is is it's something it makes it something that is completely doable by a human but with zero error yeah so a tool assisted speed i think i know what you're talking about um uh, where he was doing like the turn jumps yeah you know about that yeah yeah that's the tool assisted speed run so basically tool assisted speed runs are not possible on mario odyssey yet um because nobody can emulate the game perfectly with all the glitches and stuff. Like all the glitches that are being used. So that yeah. that's a big problem at the moment. But Minecraft, like you could just make a tool assisted mod. Yeah. <laughs> so it's easy to mod Minecraft, but it's not so easy to mod Mario Odyssey and stuff like that. Didn't you and I attempt like a, a, a completely no cheat vanilla like speedrun yeah. of Minecraft? Yeah. We never finished that. No, we didn't. We were, um, we were on like two hours though, so... <laughs> yeah, and we weren't... I think we just got diamond, like full diamond, and we were at two hours, and we were like, okay. <laughs> um, Something happened with like the world, I think, didn't it? Yeah. Or like the I, server. I remember, yeah, because the server went down. Um, but I was just thinking about speedrunning, and it's so crazy. I think there's a spider on my... No, never mind. It's so crazy to me how people can take games like this. Breath of the Wild can be beaten in like 10 minutes. <laughs> and and you know how big that game is. Yeah. Um, well, that I don't, designed, but I'm going to agree anyway. That game is designed for that. Um, you can waltz right up 
to the final boss at the beginning of the game. Um, that's interesting. From what I've heard, uh, at least that's what I've been told. I haven't played the game, but I've been told that you can legitimately just walk right up to Ganon and be like, bro, screw you, you're dead. But <sighs> you also only have three hearts and, like, sticks to fight with, so, I mean, it's not going to work. Um, but I think I think it is legitimately possible. Like, it's 100% possible to kill Ganon just right off the bat. Yeah, you just have to be really good. Yeah. Um, but this uh, semi-separate topic, I wanted to uh, to talk about. So, in the last, I think it was the last episode when I talked about the Pokemon logo. Yeah, that was last um, episode. I've gotten some uh, I've gotten some feedback from many people saying that I'm, you know, worthless for my opinion. Well, you are. Um, uh, definitely in every way. <laughs> Get um, off my podcast. <laughs> okay, see ya. Um, I'm just kidding. I, uh, I love you. I've been thinking about Pokemon as a whole recently, and how I was going to say how it's evolved, but in reality, <laughs> but, um, oh, that's funny. Um, oh, I thought how, that was intentional. No, it wasn't. Um, how it hasn't evolved. How it hasn't changed. And I, I was thinking. I think. That's partially the reason that they haven't even bothered to redo the logo. It's like their brand that that it's exactly how it has been, you know. Except and for like, because that's what the new generations are for. I feel like that's that's where all the revamping and stuff is. Exactly, and the fact that they rely so heavily on them just adding a hundred new Pokemon, one new game mechanic, a, a new region, and a new story. The the difference is. When you look at something like Skyrim and like Oblivion and um, Morrowind, like all three, those are all Bro, three of the Elder Scrolls games. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, did you not know what those were? No. <laughs> okay. It's it's all Elder Scrolls like Skyrim. Yeah. Um, it was Morrowind, Oblivion, and then Skyrim. They're all very similar, but they all have so many different things to them. Yeah. And like different mechanics, the gameplay is different, the story is completely different. But they're open world games. You could do whatever you want. Like if you just want to like go through the story with just gauntlets, you can. I mean, you probably shouldn't. You should probably pick up a weapon. All right, we're back. <laughs> uh, we had technical difficulties. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> um so what was I saying? Oh. You're talking about Skyrim and the others. So, Bethesda also does, you know, the Fallout series. They do Skyrim, yes. you know, the Elder Scrolls, and they also have the Fallout series. Mm -hmm. um, they also have, I think, I think Diablo is Bethesda. I might be wrong. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. I, if you're Who watching knows? and you know. Um, but every entry is new. It's, it's fresh. They spend a lot of time world building and stuff like that. Um, and then you look at Pokemon, and they've been using the exact, for the main series games, they've been using the exact same formula since 1996. And I explained it to Joseph, and I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to read it word for word, because I explained <laughs> it very well. Okay. Um, it was, uh, hold on, I'm going to have to find the message. It was like three hours ago. <laughs> Um, <laughs> okay, I found it. Alright, so the way that the Pokemon games work, every game for for eight generations, so eight games plus three remakes and two sequels. Uh, get your starter. Battle your rival. Fight eight gym leaders in order. Find out the find out about the legendary in there somewhere. Oh no, there's an evil organization. LMAO prank. Now they want to use the legendary. Oh, you kicked their butts. Now go fight the elite four. Oh, now the <laughs> champion too. Oh, now you're the champion. And now fill the encyclopedia, moron. That's it. And it's the same thing every time. And it's a different evil organization. There's two legendaries, and then there's a third one that's even more powerful. It's the same thing every time. And it's honestly yeah, genius, though. It is. It, the it thing works. Is, it, it worked 
in the past. For seven mm. generations, it worked. And this generation, people were done with it. Really? Eight, eighth generation. Because, I mean, ever since, like, Gen 4, people were like, alright, this is getting a little bit stale. Um, but it was always, you know, there was always, like, cool new Pokemon. They, they were adding new mechanics and stuff. The mechanic for this generation is just Mega Evolution, but they're big now. Like, that, that's all it is. We've already seen it. They made new models, and they took Mega Evolution out. So it, it doesn't even matter anymore. It's just a replacement. Wow. Which is gig- Gigantamaxing and Dynamaxing. It's the same thing. Um, and it's, it's infuriating as a fan, because I love these games. And I played through Pokemon Sword, which is the newest one. And I loved it. I had fun with it, because I like these games. However, I can... I can deeply relate with the people that say that it's getting stale because I am starting to agree with them. What do you want them to do, though? Like, what could they do to make it I better? I have been thinking about this all day. <laughs> okay. Didn't you so work this, today? Yes, this is all I was doing <laughs> while I was working. I was thinking about this. I was working. I was just... Uh, my job just washing re- some dishes, you know. Yeah, my job doesn't about require Pokemon. brain power. Um, so... Okay, you know the Kanto Pokemon and the Johto Pokemon. Yeah. Gen 1 and 2. Oh, jeez. When Gen 1 came out, it, you know, 151 Pokemon, Mew was under the truck, even though he wasn't. If you know Pokemon, you get that reference. Eli doesn't. Um, when Gen uh, 2 okay. came out, they they didn't really know what they wanted to do. So when Gen 2 came out, which they is were Gold, just Silver, like, and Crystal. Eh, screw it. Let's do the exact same thing. They did the same thing, and they did it. Basically the exact same way. So it's a new region, new uh, gym leaders, new Elite Four somewhat. Um, But the idea is that Johto, which is the new region, is just right next to Kanto. I think to the west. I don't remember. It's like right next to it. They're both right next to each other. So when you defeat the Elite Four in Johto, the entirety of Kanto opens up. So basically, the entire first game. Okay. Um, which was very strange. Um, because, like... And I may be wrong, now that I'm thinking about this. That's how it was in the remakes of the second gen, which is Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver. Um, I'm pretty sure that's how it was in Gold and Silver already, but I may be wrong. It may only be in the remakes. Regardless... Um, so you could go back to Kanto and, you know, all the Pokemon in Kanto, all the gym leaders in Pokemon were more powerful because, you know, you're the champion of Johto. So going to Kanto, you're going to be fighting stronger trainers. So it's, it's, you're basically playing two games in one, which was really cool. Um, and one of my favorite aspects of Soul Silver, which is the one that I played. What I think they need to do is... Gen 8 needs to be the stopping point, at least for now, um, in terms of creating new content. And what they need to do is reboot the series. Okay. Um, Because you can't tell me that the Switch cannot handle good graphics (laughs) when it has Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild, just those two. First party Nintendo games, you can't tell me that it can't render good graphics. Those are gorgeous games. All right. And it's Mario. Oh, my. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, no. Yes. Ho- my. Hold on. Hello? Oh, my God. That's so loud. My, uh, my phone fell and my, he- my headphones unplugged. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, so, this is what I'm thinking. Okay, this is the master plan. Reboot the series. So, Generation 1 has been remade twice. Um, so they released Red, Blue, and Yellow. Then they released Fire Red and Leaf Green. Don't ask. Leaf Green? The, yeah, don't ask why the color changed. Um, and then they released Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. And also, they just favorite gen 1 in general for some reason it's the OGs I guess yeah people know them everybody know Charizard that's the big boy (laughs) 
That's everybody, the big dragon fire breathing every, dragon knows boy. That's big penis B. <laughs> what? Yeah, have you ever seen that video? No. It's the guy who's uh, calling Pokemon by the wrong names, and he gets the <laughs> B drill, and he's like, "Everybody know that's big D word B." I want to see that. That's, that's I think funny. that'd be really funny. <laughs> it's like this guy on on an interview with like the news. It's it's a skit, but. And then there's this other person who's like a, p- a fan of Pokemon correcting him. And she's like, that's bee drill. Bees don't even have penises. It's a stinger. <laughs> she gets so mad. It's funny. Anyway, so what I'm suggesting is you have the power of the Nintendo Switch, which is an incredibly powerful console for what it is. How freaking... <laughs> I'm, yeah, um, I'm sorry. For how small it is, is what yeah, I was going to say. It's so small, but it's so powerful. That's what she said. Are you are you messing with your mic? Fine. <laughs> what the heck just happened? My uh, my headphones disconnected from my dongle a little bit. That's what happened. That's what she said. Okay. <laughs> um, bro. So you I, take. I think I want to start doing that one minute clip suggestion that you you remember what I'm talking about. What? Where, where I, okay, I'm gonna just explain it for the people, too. So, Noah had this idea where, uh, I just edit out, like, a minute of the podcast episode and post that as, like, my social media advertisement for the the new episode. And, uh, I think that's a phenomenal idea, and I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do that this episode, and it's gonna be, uh, right there. (laughs) Alright. Anyway. So, I think... I think if you just rebooted the series with Kanto again, everyone would be furious. Uh Uh-huh. Because that would be the fourth remake of Gen 1. Everyone's had enough of Gen 1. (laughs) However, Gen 2 has not gotten love in so long. So here's my idea. You create a game, and for the love of God, do not release two games. Make it one game. Just one po not sword and shield, not red and blue. I always one thought that game. was stupid. It, it is it's a it's a money it's like a money ploy so that you get both games or you get a friend that gets another game. It it's stupid, but it's a it's a marketing strategy strategy. Bro, freaking left twix and right twix. <laughs> yeah. Get that out of here. Um so you make one game and I just out of the like, at, off the top of my head, I came up with the name Pokemon Beginnings. Um, you rebrand the series, and the way it works is it's Kanto and Johto, so Gen One and Two, completely remade. You know, from the bottom up, they're not reusing old assets or anything. From the bottom up, remaking, a, a, making a new Pokemon game. How oh, are the only person that knows what assets are? Oh, you know what assets are. Yes, I do. We're the only people is what I meant to say. I said uh, we're the only person. Assets assets are like models in-game, like how the characters look and stuff like that. So remake all of that. Um, and like like trees and background and like st- anything that's in the world that you can see is an asset, basically. Um, so, and... Indubitably... My idea was originally to make it in the same universe as the original games. It just takes place later. Um, but I kind of like the idea of them just starting over. Yeah. Of them just saying, okay, that was the story in that universe. This is a new universe. Um, apparently, there, that already exists in Gen 3 because Ruby and Sapphire have two different ver- two very different endings. Ruby, 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 Ruby. Um, I cannot say anything without you singing for no reason. I'm sorry. Um, you're That's infuriating. Get off my yeah, podcast. Dude. Booted. Uh, Get Joseph that, in here. That song is actually from Guitar Hero 3. Pretty good. I, uh, I doubt it's from Guitar Hero. Yeah, I mean, it's in it. <laughs> okay. I mean, they made it specifically for no, Guitar Hero. No, they didn't. They didn't make any of the songs specifically for Guitar no, Hero. No. I don't think. But 
I I meant Guitar Nintendo. Hero That's is a where I know it from. Nightmare. <laughs> oh to lord. Be Ooh. How did they get all that stuff? Yeah. Anyway, I have no. Actually, a lot of the songs are like remakes. They're not. They're not the actual original songs. Like I know the first one, the very Do first you- song on the set list, "Slow Ride" by Foghat, is re-recorded. They cut out like a really long solo because it's really long. That's it, interesting. It's supposed to be if- an easy song. I wonder if they got the licensing for the songs, but they had to re-record them, or if they just re-recorded them and didn't do anything. They ha- th- <laughs> is that allowed? There has, to be, <laughs> there has to be some licensing somewhere. Yeah, there's there's no way they, they got away with, what, like, probably like 50 songs? In each game. In each game, you yeah. know, without going through people. There's. If they anyway. did, though, more power to them. Yeah. So, my idea is, when you start the game, there's this area in between Kanto and Johto called Tojo Falls. Um, I, I honestly don't remember if Tojo Falls is that area, but it's like a big oh, waterfall area. I thought this was still part of your concept, and I was like, you made that up? That's like... <laughs> oh, that's no, crazy. but I, there is part of it. Um, so, my idea is that around Tojo Falls, there is a town that's built. Um... Because Tojo Falls is right... Once again, I do not remember if Tojo Falls is that location, but if anyone knows the area I'm talking about, that area, in between Kanto and Johto, it's a a real thing in the games. Almost positive it's called Tojo Falls. Um, So a town is built there now. So this is is my idea and not in the game. Bro, it's Johto but flipped. Bro. I mean, it only came out in Gen 2. Tojo Falls didn't exist in Gen 1, so probably... Did you realize that? No, but it's the I mean, J it's and the T different. flipped. How's it spelled? Johto is J O H T O, yeah. and Tojo is just T O J O. Huh. Anyway, weird. So the town is there, and that's where you start. So in Kanto, you usually start in Pallet Town, and in Johto, you start in New Bark Town. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah. Um. Totally. I just can't remember if New Bark is Gen Two. I think it is. Um, you always start in some stupid, weird town. Anyway, so... It's, the, nobody's going to know the difference. <laughs> yeah, I know. The idea of the game is that it's basically once you leave your house, it's free reign. Okay. And you can just do whatever you want and go to any gym in any order you want and anything like that. So I thought of some specific examples. So the idea of a starter came to mind because... You know, if you're doing Kanto and Johto, that's two sets of starters. Because mm-hmm. you've got Bulbasaur, Charmander, Squirtle, and you've got Chikorita, Cyndaquil, Totodile, who I love much better than the other three, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, except for Charmander. Charmander gets an exclusion because I like him. He's very cute, and he has fire on his tail. Thank Unrelated. You. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, basically, I was trying to think of a way that made it so like made it make sense with the you know loose story for why you have a choice between six pokemon instead of two um but i thought of an idea so basically in this rewritten story everybody know professor oak okay everybody know that <laughs> everybody know professor oak everybody know that man that man's everybody a good man professor oak. he say would you like a bulbasaur big man oak. no Nobody else wants Bulbasaur either. Um, man, Bulbasaur doesn't get love. If only he didn't turn into Venusaur, he would get more love. I I can agree with that. I love Bulbasaur, but Venusaur yeah. is kind of meh. Bulbasaur is really cute. Ivysaur is like cool, like he's fine. And then Venusaur is like, ooh, you are ugly. <laughs> Do you, um, <laughs> bro, it's evolving but backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I thought of an idea. So the, uh, the professor of Johto region is professor Elm. Um, and his Did personality, not know that. Yeah. Uh, nobody else does either. Cause gen two doesn't get love. Bro, they're both Dang. tree names though. Yeah, all of them are. What are the other? Well, um, so it's, let's just Oak, stick with three. Oak, Elm, Birch is gen three. Four is Rowan. Uh, five is, Oh, I know. Juniper. 
That's it. That's the only one I know. Okay. Well, that's the uh, only ones that matter because they're the only what's ones the, in Pogo. Uh, what's the one in What's the one in Pogo? What? What is the What is the name of the one in Pogo? It's Oak, isn't it? No, no, no. Are you he, about? He, he's friends with oh, Professor Oak. Oh, is Oak. it like Willow or something? Yeah, 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 Willow. So yeah, another tree. They're all trees or plants. There's one that's Professor Ivy, but she was only in the anime. <laughs> only in the manga. <laughs> yeah. Manga adapt- or anime adaptation. <laughs> um, I don't even freaking know what manga means, but I thought that... Uh, it's the books. Oh. Manga is the books and comics. They're not interchangeable. Don't Don't call manga anime and don't call anime manga. The weebs will get you. <laughs> we have any weebs watching the podcast? <laughs> we got any weebs in the chat? Can I get a weeb in the chat? <laughs> got please? any weebs? Um, so the idea that I had, so um, Professor Elm and Professor Oak are very good friends, and Elm kind of like looks up to Professor Oak in the story. Um, so my idea for this, you know, reboot of the series is that Professor Elm is like an apprentice. Um, so. Professor Elm was sent on a journey to go, ca- or not a journey, but like a, like a job to go get some Pokemon for Professor Oak, and he came back with Chikorita, Cyndaquil, and Totodile. Chico. Um, and right as you're talking to Professor Oak to you know get your starter, Elm bursts in and he's like, "I got these Pokemon for you," <laughs> uh, to Professor Oak and Professor business Oak's competition, like, baby. Yeah. So Professor Oak's like, "Well, I don't necessarily need these. You can also choose from one of these if you want, because I don't need them." Um, we already had these, and Elm is an idiot. Uh, no. Um, and then they go so, to war. Yes, and then everyone's dead. So, basically, you have the choice from all six. Um, and I think that would really be cool to have a choice of all six of them rather than <laughs> just, you know, the three for Kanto and the three for Johto. Like, you can <laughs> have all six of them. So, the second you leave the lab with your starter whoever you choose out of the six you can go to kanto or johto once you're in one you can hop to the other it doesn't matter you have free reign over everything wait can i make a joke real quick yeah <laughs> long ago kanto and johto lived together in harmony then everything changed when professor elm attacked only professor oak the master of all three starters can stop them <laughs> but when the world yes! needed them most he sat in his lab and did nothing <laughs> because he was fat and lazy. After after you get done talking about your concept, I want to talk about Avatar. Okay, I'm, I agree with that. The, I, I don't have much more. This, this is basically what I thought about all day. So, <laughs> um, so basically, you can go wherever you want. You can go in any order you want. Because uh, the way you did it in the original Kanto games and every other Kanto game, every iteration of Kanto, uh, except one, which I'll get to in a second, um, you go to Brock, then you go to Misty, then you go to Lieutenant Surge, then it's either Sabrina at Celadon, whatever. There's a certain order you go in, right? Um, right. Sabrina is not at Sabrina is not at Celadon City. She's in Saffron. I lied. I cannot remember the name of the one in Celadon City. She's Grass type, and I guarantee you she's high 100 percent of the time. Uh, it's if you same, if you okay, I'm if you played right the game, now. you know that she's high. I cannot remember her name. Erica. That's her name. I remembered. I'm very proud of Dude, I know Kanto. I just... Uh, I can't think of it right now. Um, it's okay, anyway, no, so there, We believe you. Okay, thank you. There's a specific order that you do them in. Um, with the exception of a couple that you can kind of throw around. But uh, it's always the same, basically. So, in this one, I wanted to make it so that... Based on how many gyms you've defeated... The rest of the gyms in the game level up. Okay. So say the uh the first gym, all the Pokemon are always under level say eleven. So all the Pokemon are under under level eleven, no matter which gym you're fighting. So out of the um sixteen or seventeen, which I will also get to in a second, um no matter which one you fight, they will always be under eleven. So the second you fight that next one, all the Pokemon jump up to, like, 17 in all the rest of the gyms. So then you can go to any of the rest of the gyms and fight that one. So there's not a specific order that you need to do them in. So they level with you 
so there's th- so there isn't a need for there to be an order you know yeah um and say so say you do want to do brock first brock. so say he has Let's say nerf. say he has a uh <laughs> Just a like a level eight Geo Dude and a level ten Onyx. I think Love that Geo actually Dude. might be what he has. Um, and then you go throughout the game, whatever. Say you do another playthrough and you save Brock for the end. All right. Well, now he's got Brock. like a level sixty five Hitmon Lee. He's got like a Steelix. It, you know, like their teams evolve and they have more Pokemon and their Pokemon are stronger as you get stronger and have more Pokemon as well. Um, because in the, like, I guess the story of Pokemon, that's actually how it works. Um, they, these gyms aren't in any particular order. It's just the order that you're going in, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's just the order that the, the person that you are playing is playing as is going in. And the, they are supposed to, as gym leaders, they're required to gauge your level and try to play to your level. Um, so it fits with the story for them to be playing with your level. Um, the reason I said 16 or 17 gyms, because there's eight in each region. However, in one city in the story, there were two gyms in town, but one of them, but they, apparently they couldn't have two gyms. So one of them closed and became just like a training dojo. Um, I think it would be really cool if they added that gym back. So there's one city that has a psychic type and a fighting type gym. Can you still hear me? Yes, I'm listening. Okay, I, I heard a weird sound and I thought it cut out. Okay. Wait, I, while you're on pause, I want to say real quick, every time you say Brock, I, I just think of, uh, you know who Paul Heyman is? No. You know who Brock Lesnar is, though, don't you? Nope. No? No idea. He's not just WWE, bro. He's an icon. But all I can think of, uh, for those of you who know, is Paul Heyman going, Brock Lesnar! Alright, continue. I'm, okay. okay. <laughs> um, so, I think it would be really cool. So the way that it worked... Also, Johto and Kanto share an Elite Four, by the way. I don't, I don't know, know what if that I means. Them. Okay, so when you defeat all eight gyms... In the, in the original games, you defeat all eight gems, and you're, like, leveling up and all this stuff. Then you go fight the Elite Four, which are four back-to-back -back battles with the, like, strongest trainers in the region. Um, and then you fight the champion. So it's really the Elite Five, but we don't talk about it. It's the Elite Four plus champion. <laughs> all right. Um, and the champion is, like, the end-all, be-all, you know, the final boss, whatever. Um, so the Elite Four in every game is, like the final frontier like that's what you're working towards um, the final once countdown you, once you beat once you beat the champion you become the champion <laughs> um so it's very interesting and i think so the way that it works in the remakes of the second generation is that you fight through all eight gens in johto and then you fight the elite foreign champion and then you become the champion of johto and then you go to Kanto, you fight through all eight gyms there, and then you fight the same Elite Four again. Um, but then someone else is the champion for some reason. We don't know why. Um, so you have to fight another champion. Okay. Because they're the... Cha oh, I remember why. They're the champion of Kanto, because you're in Kanto now. So you become... the At the end of that game, you become the champion of both regions, which is really funny. Um... So I think something interesting would be you have to collect eight badges. You have to collect all eight Kanto badges to fight the Kanto Elite Four plus champion. And you have to collect all eight Johto badges to fight the Johto Elite Four plus champion. So in order to complete the story from one region, you need to complete the story from one region. You can't get eight badges just hopping between because they're, they're, like, region-locked, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think adding that ninth gym in Saffron City with the other one would really add some variety to it, because you, uh, you can not fight the psychic type, which is the one that is usually there. 
Um, and it would add variety. And I think maybe throwing in one or two extra gyms in different places, maybe throw in some more cities. Because, I mean, let's face it, we can have bigger maps now, you know? Yeah. And if this is a full reboot, we can just redo a lot of stuff. Um, and I I don't know. I, I've i gone on for, about this for too long. It's just... <laughs> yeah, I was, episode's almost in and... <laughs> I was just thinking about the logo, and I started thinking about how they could fix the series as a whole. And I think in order for them to fix the series as a whole, the best option currently is to just start over. Because nothing's wrong with how it is. It's just the same thing. It's just how it is, bro. And I think starting over, starting fresh, making it an open world experience, and less so a story in which you get to choose who you carry with you, would really help it. And I think after they make that game, and the reason that I'm combining Kanto and Johto into that game is because if they just released Kanto, it would make people angry. However, if they released the Johto one with Kanto as well... Oh, yeah. I was going to say, if they released Johto alone, it wouldn't make sense. Exactly, because that's kind of part of its story now. Um... So I think releasing them both together as one story and one not necessarily unit not necessarily as one region but kind of you know one story it would it would really help it and then from then on they would make you know gen 3 a game gen 4 a game and they wouldn't necessarily combine them because it wouldn't really make sense. I think the I first mean, re- why not? Why can't they just I, do 3 and 4 and then 5 and 6? Yeah, I guess, and then seven and eight. I mean, well, see, keeps the, the thing trend is, trend going. And yeah, I guess you're right because the whole idea is that the whole idea in my head is that I'm basing it off of the like the theoretical world because we've never seen a world map of the Pokemon world. We just kind of guess. You know, we have seen a world map of what Avatar. Oh yes, we see that every time. <laughs> um. So, I mean, you can kind of just arrange things how you want. So they could do three and four as a game, then they could do five and six, and then seven and eight, and they could just position things where they wanted to. Or, they don't have to do it in order. Like, to be honest, okay, so Gen Gen 8 is based in an area, like, the, the region itself is based on Europe. Or, not Europe, sorry, the UK. Um, and then... Gen 6 is based off of France. So if they did those together, obviously 7 is in the middle there, but it would make sense for them to do seven and or 6 and 8 together because they're somewhat based around the same region, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think, I think if they did stuff like that, it would make sense. And then Gen 3 is based in somewhat of a tropical area, sort of, but not really like an island area. However, Gen 7 is literally... Gen 7 is literally based on Hawaii. So if they did 3 and 7 together, that would make sense. And then... um, But that's also 3 and 7. What do you mean? Like, they're not consecutive. That's what I'm saying. I think in these games, they shouldn't limit the Pokemon that spawn to the region that the game is based on. I think they should take a set group of Pokemon, say each game takes like 250 to 300 Pokemon just from the list of Pokemon and throws the, I mean, obviously base them around something, but... Bro, it's 11-11. Make a freaking wish. Amen. They just take those Pokemon and put them in those two regions. Regard- so obviously all the Pokemon that spawn in the region originally... So all of Gen 1 spawns in Gen 1, all of Gen 2 spawns in Gen 2. They both spawn in each other because they're right next to each other. And then some from other regions, so grab some Gen 8 Pokemon, some Gen 4, you know, just throw them all in there. Because in the end, it is an open world, and it's not like these regions have walls around them. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, these Pokemon are going to spread to other regions and stuff like that. Um, I mean, that's the whole point of, like, Alolan Executor. Executor is a Gen 1 but in the Gen 7 area, 
he's a palm tree because it's the freaking islands of Hawaii. Of course, he's going to be a palm tree. I love Alolan Executor. He's so cool. He's so stupid. I hate it, but I also <laughs> love him with all of my heart. I would die for Alolan Executor. He's beautiful, and he is very tall. Um, and I think it would be good for them to do... I, I desperately want them to keep doing regional variants because they're so cool. I mean, Meowth got another one. Meowth has um, Alolan Meowth and Alolan Persian, but it also has Galarian Meowth and another evolution called Perserker, which is, you know, exclusive to Galar, which is the newest region. And I think okay. if they do more stuff, I think if they do more stuff like that, so to say they take something like a Gen 4 Pokemon and give it a Kanto version, you know, so they're, I mean, it's backstepping, but I think that would help make the world feel more alive and more correct, you know? Mm -hmm. Because it, these Pokemon aren't just moving to new regions. They're going to move all across the world and they're going to, you know, fit the climate of wherever they are. I I mean, say you take something... I mean, Piplup is a bad example because it's a starter and they would never do a starter. I'm trying to think of a Pokemon that you know from Gen 4. Freaking Riolu, okay? Everybody know Riolu. Everybody know Riolu. Cute little guy. Um, say they take him and they put him in... Like... That's a bad example because that's the future. I'm trying to think. Oh, okay. Bro. Say they put. <laughs> say they put uh, Riolu in Gen three. So, Gen three is like a very hot climate area. So, say he uh, he develops like long ears to c to shade his head or something while he's fighting in the sun. You know, and stuff like. I, I just. I gotta stop talking about this. I'm gonna go yes. on for another hour and a half. <laughs> All right. <laughs> TLDR. <clears throat> Water. Fix it. Water? Sponsor. Earth. Here it is, right here. Fire. Air. <sighs> Long, Long ago, ago four the nations four nations lived, lived together in harmony. harmony. Then everything changed when the when Fire, Fire Nation, Nation attacked. attacked. Only the Avatar, master, master of, all, of four all, elements, all four could elements, could stop them. Stop them. But, but when, when the, the world, world needed him most, most, he vanished. He vanished. <laughs> A hundred years passed, and my, and my brother, brother and I discovered, discovered a new avatar, an airbender named Aang. Aang. And, and although his airbending skills, skills, skills were great, great he had a lot he's to got learn. a lot to learn before he's ready to save ha, 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 ha. But I believe Aang can save the world. Do, 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 do. Book one, or two, or three, depending on what you are watching. <laughs> so, on my uh, journey of re-watching it, since they put it on Netflix... I am almost finished with book two, and oh my gosh, I, book I two like is forgot how good it Earth, was. Right? Yeah, it's it's such a good show. Like it is, it's flawless. It's so it's good. It's so good. I I also unmatched. That that was unmatched. The, the last good dis or get it Disney. That was the last good Nickelodeon show. Um, SpongeBob. Yeah, Hello? but it's not good anymore. Yeah, you're right. Uh, at least I feel like they knew where to stop with Avatar. However, they tried to make a new series and it didn't work. I feel like a lot of people like Korra. I mean, I, I never, I never, I, I might have not given it enough of a chance because I didn't watch all of it, but it just, it felt so dark. It it's definitely got a darker tone to it, yeah. It's good though. Whereas, it is like, a good show. The Last Airbender is like as lighthearted as it could be, you know. Yeah. Like the only dark part is the very end. Spoilers. Dude, that final battle. I I cannot wait to watch that again. And It's good. And the scene with the dragons, the red and blue dragons. I don't remember that scene. It's like um I think one of them is like Roku's animal or something, like his his guide or whatever. I don't. Goku. Roku. The Goku. Roku. <laughs> like the streaming service. Shut, <laughs> dude. No, the Avatar before Aang. Goku. Fire, Firebender Roku. Goku. <laughs> <laughs> 
Bro, Fire Lord Iro. <laughs> I love Iro. Isn't he like really sarcastic? I I feel like I can't remember. Iro's the uncle. Zuko's uncle. Oh yes, yes, yes. Uncle Iro. The T T Love Man. The Fire Lord. What is no, his name? No, he's not. Iro's not Fire Lord. I was joking. I I know that. Uh, uh, Ozai is the Ozai, the new it. one. And then before and, that, it was Azulon. And then before that, it was Sozin. No, I was I was thinking. I'm of brushed Ozai. up, dude. Ozai is the. Uh, he's like really, really just angry all the time. Yeah, basically. I mean, he's um, the Fire Lord. Doesn't Azula become Fire Lord right at the end? Or I don't. I don't remember. Maybe. Because I know, I know most. I feel like most of the fight with Aang is with Azula. I may be wrong, but I you know Azula the final becomes. Fight? Yeah. I don't remember. She's like lightning I, bending everywhere. I just remember, bro. The lightning bending is so cool. Mm -hmm. There's this one scene that I watched. It was in a an episode I watched recently. Where um, it was it was Sokka, Katara, Toph, Aang, you know the usual crew, Zuko, and Iroh, all against Azula. That's um, in book two. Yeah, but I thought, Sokka I thought was Zuko off to the side, and uh, she just struck um, Iroh with lightning, and Aang shoots uh like a bolt of air at her and katara with water toph with earth and zuko with fire and they they just stand in a line and shoot their respective element at her all at the same time and it is it's a scene i don't remember but it is so freaking cool that is cool does doesn't iroh die i don't remember iroh dying i feel like he does I hope not. I I can't remember specifically. Um, that that show is so good, unmatched. I honestly I I forgot how good it was. Like, also, I, in Korra, I, I'm pretty sure Aang is just dead. If I remember he, correctly, is he dead or old? No, no, no. I know his, his kid is in it, right? So, yeah, his, his son, son. I'm pretty sure. Yes, he's dead because yeah, Katara yeah, yeah, is yeah. alive and she's really old. And I'm also pretty sure Katara just dies like of old age. Sweet. Um, Sokka is the leader of the police force. I'm pretty sure. No, Toph is or Toph's daughter. Toph's daughter is I the love leader Toph. of the police force. I forgot force. how freaking sassy she is. Um, She's so I can't mean. Remember. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the only one that's still alive is Sokka. Like, oh. at the end. Also, I forgot the amount of blind jokes. There are so many blind jokes, and they yeah, are so are. funny. Uh, isn't there one where she has to, like, get on Appa, and, and she just misses her son? There, There's a lot of them with Appa. I know she doesn't like riding Appa because she doesn't like not being on the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was this one where they, uh, they went... Uh, like the the four went in like this dark hole, and Sokka was like, "This sucks." Or he didn't say this sucks, but he was like, "I can't see anything down here." And he he just does his normal, you know, complaining Sokka thing. And Toph is like, "Oh, what a shame!" <laughs> 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 and he's like, "All oh, right, sorry." <laughs> she has such a lighthearted mood about the entire thing. I know. And also, Toph. Toph is one of those characters that is so... It's like, you love her and you hate her because she's so aggressive, but that's why you love her. <laughs> yeah. She is... Uh, every character in that show is flawlessly designed. Everyone loves Sokka, even though he's kind of a jerk. And I, I never realized how much of a player he was. Like, yeah, as, bro. At, watching it as a kid. We were talking about that the other day, you know, where... <laughs> he gets the Dude. chicks, baby. He does. There, there was freaking Yue. There was Suki. There's Tai Lee. They have their little like. I don't know if it, I don't remember if anything ever happens with him and Tai Lee, but that, they that's they, they like flirt, you know. Training, right? He was training under them. Under the. Under who? Am I? Who am I thinking? Of? Who is Tai Lee? 
Ty Ty Lee is with the Fire Nation with Azula and May. Oh, that's okay. Okay, they, I was they thinking just like of, flirt. Uh, I don't know if anything happens. I was. Uh, who's the one? Su- um, Suki is the one that like beat him up. Suki. Okay, so Suki's the face paint one. Yeah. And then the other one is the moon now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bro, what do you do when your girlfriend turns into the moon? <laughs> you, you he mentions that. Start he playing. mentions that in the past. It, it later, doesn't he? He's like, bro, my girlfriend turned into the moon. Shut up. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Bro, what's worse than getting friend zoned? Getting freaking moon zoned, baby. <laughs> um, something I remember from Korra, specifically, is that Korra herself has um she like just inherently knows earth fire and water like very well um but the only thing she doesn't have basically any control of is air so they made her the exact opposite of ang which i really liked um so and she has a lot of trouble with airbending so her um you know ang's son he teaches her because, you know, they're repopulating the airbenders and stuff like that. Um, and I forgot what I was saying. Oh, one of the series of one of the books in Korra is about the spirit realms, like specifically. Because in the after the first book, she learns how to bend air. Did like, they ever I, finish that show, by the way? Yeah, they did. It's got four seasons, I'm pretty sure. Really? Okay. I I thought it was just unfinished, so I, w- I was never really too interested. But now I want to watch it. The only no, thing that I really remember from that show is Aang's son and the whole like, um, the whole like bending thing where there was that dude who like could take people's bending permanently. That's all yeah. I remember. You good? Yeah. Sorry, I. I just opened a snap. Daily got a shiny pat rat. D- <laughs> Come on. <laughs> She's flexing on us. Flexing on the haters. Anyway, I'm sorry. I I wasn't. You said something about taking bending. Yeah. That that was in core. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That that's what I was saying. Uh, that and Ang Sun is like the only thing that I remember about Korra. Also, she has. Uh a homosexual relationship with somebody. Ooh. Which was big strides I, forward. I feel like I remember that cuz it was like um you know sparked a lot yeah. of talk about the show. It did. Um but yeah, that was I can't even remember her name. Asuri or something like that. Azuri. Bro, it was UA. She just came back and she was like other team now. Sorry, Sokka. <laughs> I'm no longer the moon. Uh, I am no longer the moon. I am a... Uh, I have retired <laughs> from being the moon. <laughs> in that in that episode, wasn't Iroh, like, guarding the fish or something? Like, he was there. Wait, what episode? Where she oh. becomes the moon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, um, like, Zuko's trying to kill them. But yeah, Iroh and it, like, it's no. uh, it's um, uh, uh, what is his freak? Zhao, General Zhao, is that his name? The the one who's like against Zuko. Yeah, it's General like, Zhao buddy. that uh, or Commander Zhao. He was promoted, yeah, and he's the one that kills the fish, and then and, and everything gets dark. Bro, half that episode was in black and white. That episode, that's the final episode of season one. Or book one. That episode. Holy crap. Because that's when they, they do the solar eclipse, right? Yeah. Or, no. Uh, no it's lunar the, eclipse. That's it. And then oh, the, okay, all the waterbenders so lose their bending and stuff. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. then so the, a- Aang goes into the Avatar state and he turns into that big blue monster. Freaking the, uh, destroys all two, the Fire Nation ships. There's two eclipses in that game and I get them... Co- er, in that <laughs> game. In that show, and I get them confused. Yeah, the because solar the, is the one at the end. The solar eclipse is the one at the end that strengthens the Fire the, Nation. The Fire powers, Nation, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is weird that the lunar eclipse would. Negate oh no 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 no! Uh, it does. Um, 
It does negate their power. The the eclipse does. Oh, it does. Yes, the solar eclipse <gasps> negates oh, fire. Yes, fire bending that's, and that's lunar. when they attack. Yes, and they have like like six minutes to attack or something like that. I remember that. So they're they're basing the entire siege on the Fire Nation around the solar eclipse. I remember that. Yeah. But that's that's like halfway through season three, isn't it? Like that's not even like the end. I, I feel like I don't. Or is it? I don't remember. Uh, the uh, the only stuff that I remember really well is what I've rewatched. Yeah. I don't remember like a lot from season three, and that's the fun thing about rewatching it. I don't remember enough for it to be boring. Yeah. Like I, think, I, I I'm think having I the back. time of my life rewatching this show. I definitely need to go back and rewatch most of it because it's so good. Like, how did they come up with that? I don't know, bro. It's so good. I I wish. I think the main thing that kind of pushed Korra out of everyone's minds is because of the time skip. Because I mean, you look at like Avatar, and it's like it's themed around like Imperial China, you know. Mm-hmm. And then you go to like Korra, and there's technology and stuff, and like they have like flying ships and stuff like it's it it all makes sense because it's all very steampunky but it was just weird yeah um but i, I think it fit the tone of the show well because it, they played it it's a different show you know it's not a continuation of avatar it's a sister show yeah they, they need to put that on netflix too because now af- after i watch avatar i'm gonna find a way to watch chorus yeah, like like just go straight into it. For those of you who haven't watched Korra, well, I mean, we basically spoiled a lot of everything here, so sorry. Um, <laughs> basically, you have to go into Korra knowing that it is not Avatar. It's the same universe, same story. How but could it's... they redo that though? You know, they can't. Like, if if they tried to make that Avatar, it wouldn't have worked. Exactly. They had to make it a different show because making a same the same show in the same time period as Aang, it just wouldn't have made sense. Yeah, I feel like it would have devalued The Last Airbender because it would have. like uh, every everything about that conceptually was just so on point. It was perfect. Avatar the Last Airbender as a show was perfect. Ten as out of a ten. Uni- as a universe, one of my favorite by far. I, I want to ask you this: If you were a bender, uh, well, I've thought about this. Two, so many two times. separate questions. I feel like need to be asked. What do you feel like you would be like, just based on like fate or like your destiny? You, you know, whatever. Yeah. And what would you actually want to be? And are they the same or or not? I feel like I would be a water bender, to be honest. Pisces. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that, that's why I'm thinking that. I feel like I would be an airbender. I, I just feel like... Honestly, I feel like the, the personality type in that's uh, depicted in the show of benders is pretty, pretty in line with Zodiac signs. Yeah. And I, I feel like that's intentional. Yeah, it's gotta be. Because, like, the, all of the uh, air nomads and stuff, like, they're, they're super peaceful... They uh, they tend to uh, not engage in conflict, you know, yeah. purposely. And then, like, the Earth signs are very, like... Firm. Yeah, but they're also... They intense. also can be crazy. Yes. They're very wild, but they're... And then fire signs are order. just freaking angry. Yeah. Angry, <laughs> loud. Is Water there- signs are just vibing. You know, I don't even yeah, know. I, I don't even know how else to say that. Is there what? Is there story as to why the Fire Nation attacked? You know, I I, I don't know. I don't think. So. I no. mean, whenever they did, everything changed. I'll tell you that right. Now. <laughs> I don't think there is actually. <laughs> just world domination. They're just evil. I don't know. They needed it, <laughs> bro. I see you've got land over there. No. <laughs> I actually well, bud dude what were you gonna say <laughs> what were you gonna say 
What were you going to say, bud? <laughs> what were you going to say? I think you know what I was going to say. Well, say it. Well, no, you got something to say first. I don't I don't know what I was going to say. All right, well, bud, I think this has been a good episode. Yes, sir. Oh, no, no I do know what I was going to say. I was going to... I was just going to say that uh, I just watched the... Like, a few hours ago, I just watched the Drill episode. Do you remember that one? No. Where they, uh, the Fire Nation tries to freaking just drill through the bossing say wall. Uh, vaguely, yes. That I remember that that happens, but I don't remember the episode. is so good. It's so that intense. Bossing say is the big Earth Kingdom. Yes. City, right? Yeah, okay. I, the way it's talked about, I feel like it's like the America of the Avatar world. Cause okay. it's it's like ever it's like where everybody wants to go for freedom and like new beginnings. Yeah, that's um, interesting. Yeah. I also, I think it's funny that they've just delegated the water tribes to the poles. Oh, that thank thank you. I don't know why that made me think of this. So you think you would be a waterbender? I think I would be an airbender. What would you want to be? Would you want to be a waterbender? I think waterbending is cool. Honestly. I, I think I would. I think I would want to be water or earth. Um, I feel I, like air wouldn't be as fun. I don't know. I I feel like rolling around on little air balls, you know, like Aang does. I yeah. feel like that'd be fun. But uh, and you can practically fly. I feel like airbending yeah. would be fun, but I mean, I, you I can feel like, fly if you have. He uses airbending with that glider. Yeah. I feel like earth and water are like the most practical. Yeah. Um, cuz especially if you learn how to metal bend. With yes, and with water, I think I would probably choose water over them all because there's there's healing that's a possibility. There's And also blood, blood bending, bending if you're evil. <laughs> well, you don't have to necessarily use it for evil. That's true. It's just it's pretty pretty twisted though. Yeah. Dude, the blood, the blood bin, bro. How, like, how do they, how do they come up with that? Didn't he? Didn't she blood bend Zuko at one point? Ma- maybe I, I don't know. I, I haven't got to the blood bending yet. I feel like she does right as he joins them, and then she doesn't trust him. I remember that she is p- <laughs> when, because <laughs> because Aang is just like, all right, I'll forgive you. Come on. <laughs> yeah. That's that's okay, a that's that, an air sign for you. That's the um that's when they go to the air kingdom. Right? When when Zuko comes back or when Zuko Yes, cuz it's in that big chasm. I d- I don't know. I don't really and remember what happened to make Zuko like That's when Zuko like was them. talking that's when Zuko was talking to the frog. I, I don't remember this. <laughs> he's he's like He's debating whether that's when they when he first tries to join them. He comes down and he's like, "Hey!" And then they get really mad at him. Oh yeah, because they don't accept him at first. Yeah, I yeah. remember that. I remember that now because Katara then, was super mad. And then Ang Ang is like, "Okay," and Sokka's like, eh, and Toph just doesn't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I love how Katara is so mad. Well, I She's feel like, like she has reason to be, though. Oh, yeah. Every, everyone there does, but they all are just like, okay, whatever, he's got hair now. <laughs> also, I totally I totally forgot that, like, the... Because that's when he has, like, the Bieber flip, right? Yeah. I forgot that hot. that was at the end. I thought that was the beginning, but the beginning was, like, the ponytail. Yeah, the ponytail looks weird. Bro, his character development... It's crazy. And Zuko's his hair an development. amazing character. He's a freaking tank, dude. And in uh, season three when Aang gets hair? Wait, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He See, there's so much I don't hairs. remember. It... It's a good show. If you All haven't right. watched it, go watch it. All right. Well, it's been a good episode. Time for the end. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, this has been a really weird episode. I talked about Pokemon for an hour, and then we talked about freaking Avatar. Well, we did the episode without a guest. Well done, brother. Oh. Hit us Sorry, with the outro. I, yeah, I was I was preparing. I was moving stuff from out of my piano because my rim's a wreck right now. Not normally yeah, is, my, but mine is on the mend actually. On the mend, yes, sir. 
All right, hit us with the outro. What key? B flat. All right. Don't be flat. Ha <laughs> <laughs> I forgot which one's B. Okay. Dude, I wasn't recording. Ah, uh, see, bro.